Welcome to Cooking with Lomi, where today, once again, we'll be making a delicious pot of piping hot doll soup. Yeah, I've been working out my courage for this, and it's time. Today, I'm going to face my fears, disassemble these jointed hands, and dye Tall's body in preparation for making the doll's head. He should be done soon, and I am stoked, but also kind of terrified of taking these hands apart. At first, I planned to disassemble them and put the fingers on thread so they wouldn't get mixed up, but the thread was too hard to get through. So then I thought wire, but my wire was too thick. The winner in the end was clear nylon thread, which is sturdy enough to dye. So to keep things straight at first, I laid each hand on a piece of paper and drew columns for each finger. As I took the hands apart, I laid the fingers in the columns, which would have worked better if I hadn't constantly been bumping the paper, so I'd do things a little differently next time, I think. Getting the hands apart was awful. The hooks were so tiny, and one of them caught my finger and cut me pretty badly, so I'll have a weird mark on the tip of one finger for a while. After I took the hands apart, I decided I'd take a chance and dye the elastic so I wouldn't have to take it off. Hopefully it'll be sturdy enough that the heat won't harm it since it isn't tense. I just know I won't be able to get elastic that thin locally, much less cut it to the correct length. We'll just hope for the best. The fingers have markings inside the joints so I can tell which pieces go together, but I have to make sure I keep them in the right order. I strung each finger individually on a loop of nylon string then prepared the rest of the doll's body, too. I scrubbed him really well with soap and water, then used baker's twine and a string puller to string up each piece individually. Then comes the dye mix. I knew I wanted a cooler tan than what I did for Rune when I dyed both his adult and kid versions, and I got suggestions for a color mix from my friend, whose username I am definitely too American to pronounce well, so yeah. I started with some dish soap, per the dye instructions, then used four colors of Rit Dye More. It was one tablespoon of sandstone, one tablespoon of chocolate brown, one quarter tablespoon of royal purple, which was roughly three quarters of a teaspoon, so I used quarter teaspoons to measure. And then one eighth of a tablespoon of racing red, so a quarter teaspoon and then an eighth of a teaspoon. I brought it all up to a boil, reduced the heat on my induction cooktop to 280 Fahrenheit, and decided to test with the thigh as the first piece because it's relatively smooth and would be easy to clean if something went horribly wrong. I tried to keep it moving in the heat, and after 30 seconds, I checked and found that instead of what I expected, it was taking a very strong lilac undertone that was making him look oxygen-starved. I decided to darken the tan mix by adding another teaspoon of chocolate brown, then dipped the thigh piece back in to even out the color. This worked very well. The big pieces ultimately stayed in the dye bath for a full minute each then got dipped into cooler water to rinse them off. I sped up the video a lot because I've done dye-in videos before, and this doesn't add a whole lot of new information aside from the color ratio I used for this particular doll, and some about his jointed hands, which we'll look at more closely in a minute. I dipped the one purpley thigh for a bit extra to even out the color.
overall, this being my fourth time dyeing a doll, I felt a little more confident about the projects on a whole. It was just the jointed hands that made me nervous. So when it came time to do the dye on those hands, I put one whole hand into a tea strainer I picked up at the grocery store and dipped it in. Since I didn't want to accidentally lose any pieces, I used a bamboo skewer to stir the pieces in the sieve because I didn't want them to stay resting on the metal or against each other in a way that would prevent the resin from taking dye. I dyed the hands for 40 seconds, but they still ended up a little darker than the body because the resin pieces are just so tiny. I don't think it's a problem though. People's hands are usually darker than their bodies because of sun exposure. I decided to use the tea strainer for dyeing the regular hands and feet too, and I just swished it around since it was one single piece and not too likely to escape the strainer. And just for fun, here's the color contrast between the newly tanned hand and the original normal resin, which is some of the palest normal resin I have ever seen. Seriously, it's almost white, like a white with a pink undertone. I like this cool tan so much better, and the color has turned out pretty even so far. The only pieces that needed special treatment were the shins, where there was some discoloration at the bottom where the dye didn't take well. It wasn't as bad as the discoloration I saw when I did Kid Rune, but still visible enough that I knew it would bother me. So I wiped the legs down with pure acetone to remove enough dye to make the color even again. This wasn't a full dye removal, just a lightening, and not enough acetone exposure to cause long-term damage to the doll. The first shin went back into the dye, but not for any timed amount, just kind of guessing how long it might take to darken them up again, and a few dips to make sure the color got back to where it should be. When I was happy with it, I did the other leg too. And that's pretty much it for this doll soup. One thing to know is that the color isn't perfect. Because anywhere the doll was sanded by the company to remove seam lines, the dye took unevenly, creating a kind of dark and light marbling that you can see here on his hip piece. And it's also present on the sides of his torso and very prominent on his neck and shoulders. The thinnest parts of his hands also took the dye a lot stronger, so he has dusky tones around his knuckles. Despite those issues though, I think he turned out beautifully, and I am absolutely in love with this color, which is so much more appealing to me than the orange-based dark tan the company offers. Next up, I'll be finally finishing his head, and I can't wait to share that process with you. And that's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.